whole machine shop. I shot these videos because I thought maybe uh, some of you might be interested in seeing what uh, machine work was like in the 1920s. Uh, I've tried to set this shop up to be a 1925 machine shop. I don't have anything here uh, that I use regularly that's any newer than 1925. Uh, and uh, I run it on a, with a line shaft uh, under steam power. Boilers over there. Uh, a little bit later I uh, will give you a tour of the shop and you can see the equipment. And then uh, maybe in, a, in later videos we'll actually be doing some work under steam power. This is the power in the shop. Uh, it's a O&S Ott and Stem Bauer 5x5. Five steam engine. It's a Pennsylvania build engine. I've not been able to find a catalog on this but I believe it to be pre-1900, about 1895 maybe. And we'll walk on down here. This is a 1925 South Bend Junior lathe. It's uh, nine inch capacity. This was kind of a stripped down version that they sold back in the mid 20s that had no quick change gearing on it and uh, no thread dial. Basically just a maintenance machine for all kinds of shops. And we'll move on down to this this little drill press somebody gave me. It had never been run. Uh, the belt was rotted off it. Uh, I just basically took it apart, cleaned it up, painted it, and set it up here running on a on a quarter twist, which involves kind of a strange alignment on the pulleys, but I've got it lined up now to where it runs pretty good. That's called a simple shifter. It's a ratchet shifting mechanism that shifts the belt and back again with a chain pull. This is my main lathe, 1925, 18-inch American. Has a double two-speed back gear, quick change thread gearing. Uh, it's a pretty fancy lathe for 1925. And I have this set up with the only rubber belt in the shop because this is the most critical belt in the shop uh, the final drive for the lathe and uh, I was pulling the old leather belts apart most of these belts uh, that I'm using here in the shop are over a hundred years old I would imagine and uh, I pieced them together and uh, they work real well. I like leather belting. This is a 14 inch shaper set up on the line shaft with uh, tight and loose pulleys. It's a Gould and Everhart, about 1920, identical to the one that's in the uh, Edison Museum in Fort Myers, Florida, right down to the last detail. Edison's shop was remodeled and uh, I think it was 1925, so he probably would have bought all new stuff. And my drill press here is one of the oldest pieces in the shop came from Champion Wagon Works when they closed up in Owego uh, I can find no manufacturing date on it but 
I believe it to be about 1884. Uh, I've seen hundreds of these, but it's the only one I've ever seen with a square table. And I don't know if it was an option or why, but Champion Wagon Works bought it with a square table. The horizontal milling machine is really quite old too. I've been running this thing since I was about eight years old and uh, never realized how old it was until I did a little research on it. This is a number one brown and sharp. They call it an 1885 edition. Well, we have steam up as you can see. 47 pounds pressure. Uh, doesn't take a whole lot to run this operation here. This boiler was intended to run at 125 pound pressure. Uh, and I have a relief valve uh, set at 60 pounds. Uh, most of the work I do here is probably between the 40 and 50 pound range. I have done some fairly heavy work on the lathe uh, at uh, 30 pounds. So uh, we're not using a whole lot of steam. It does take a lot of wood. And the great thing is you don't have to take out the trash. You can just throw it in. Um, I would like to mention this is, <laughs> this is my first attempt at a, at a YouTube video. And uh, I'm a, a rank novice at it, and uh, my inspiration for doing this came from a couple guys I'd like to mention that are regular YouTube uh, video installers. Uh, one is uh, Adam Booth, and his uh, site is uh, ABOM79. Uh, I have really learned a lot from him. He's a professional machinist, and uh, I, I would still call him old school because uh, he's third generation, and you can see the influence of his father and his grandfather in all his work. And uh, I've, I've learned a lot, you'll learn a lot. Uh, give him a shout at ABOM79, and also Keith Rucker down at the uh, Georgia Agricultural Museum. Uh, he's at uh, vintagemachinery.org, I believe it is. And uh, I've never met either one of these gentlemen, but I feel like I'm acquainted with them from their videos. Um, so if you like what you see here, <laughs> this is the opposite end of the spectrum, uh, in that we're trying to do things in this shop that we're the way they were done back in the old days by the old timers. You may find, you may see a, a dial indicator or a, a, a dial caliper laying around here, but I try to keep that stuff out of sight and I try to do it with the old uh, uh, dividers and scale type measurement system. And uh, it's uh, quite a lot of fun. Okay, we're Oiling up and getting ready to go. I don't know if I can hold this so you can see. This is a displacement lubricator that I'm using on this engine. And if you look right there, when I turn it on, you might be able to see a drop of oil going up. And you adjust it down here. And I just open it a little crack so there's a drop about every oh, 45 seconds to a minute.
Oh, we got steam now. And we can use a little water. So, I'm going to show you how the injector works. This is a Hancock inspirator injector. And it's one of the nicest working injectors that I've ever seen. It's a little complicated to operate, but once you get it figured out, on this injector, turn the steam on first. And it's actually pumping water out of the tank through the injector. This part of the injector actually injects it into the boiler. So you turn that on and you can hear it. Check this valve. And then the final step is to close the overflow. And it's putting water in the boiler. And this injector will put water in the boiler down to about 18 pounds of pressure. The other injector I have here is a Metropolitan. And I'll move this over here so you can see it a little better. It's always a good idea to have two injectors on a boiler for the redundancy of it. But this injector works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. I found that it gets hot after a while being close to the boiler like this. There it goes. Today it's fine, so now we're running both injectors. Not a good idea to put too much water too fast in a boiler, so I'll shut off the hand copper. That sound is music to a fireman's ears. When you have a good working injector, it's like having a good friend. Okay, got a piece of cast iron. In the way, Chuck. Leave just a little bit out. Okay, that's pretty good that way.
a typical boring bar from before the turn of the century. Blacksmith made, forged out of a piece of wrought iron, or maybe a little bit better steel, and then hard, the tip hardened. I found this, I think it was something that my dad might have had a long time ago, and it could have come out of the Sayre Railroad Shop, the Lehigh Valley Shop in Sayre, Pennsylvania. Who knows how old it is, but we'll give it a try. Thanks for watching my first attempt at YouTube and uh, I'd appreciate it if you'd like my channel, uh, subscribe to it. I'll be putting, uh, trying to put up some more. I hope to get a little bit better at it and uh, talk about uh, the stationary steam end of the shop in a little more detail and uh, be doing some jobs on some of the other machines that come in here. And uh, I, uh, Thanks again and we'll see you sometime.